Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's supply and demand for its and gold fundamental and technical analysis. Uh, if you like the analysis that I provide every week, uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, and share the video with your fellow colleagues. Don't forget to like, um, to press that like button as it helps really to kind of support uh, the channel. A free way to support the channel when gets the quality content out there. Anyways, let's get into um, the week ahead, and um, we'll get into some technicals as well. And if you're new to uh, Trading 180, um, basically our approach is really to combine uh, fundamental analysis um, and technical analysis to make really the best trading uh, decisions. Um, so it's not, you know, uh, you know, fundamentals are better than technicals, technicals are better than fundamentals. Um, they both play a part in trading and um uh yeah, like I said, we uh, we use them to combine um, the best uh, to find the best trading opportunities. Anyways, looking at the week ahead um, and zooming in a little bit on this, this you can find this uh, at tradingeconomics.com and there's a little tab that says uh, week ahead. So um, central bank meetings, a very busy uh, week this week. So central bank meetings in the Euro area, uh, Australia and Canada, as well as several speeches by Fed officials will dominate the calendar next week. Also China will release inflation rate and foreign trade figures and GDP updates will be available for Australia, Euro area, Japan and Canada. Investors will also be watching closely the situation in the energy market in Europe after a crucial pipeline uh, pipeline bringing gas to Germany from Russia will no longer reopen as planned. So that is definitely something um, you need to watch out for. And again, the devil's in the details. You can have a read um, at tradingeconomics.com and then there's a week ahead uh, tab. In fact, I'll just show you exactly where it is um, right here. It's, uh, it'll be one of these, depending on when you actually uh, you know watch this video, it should be somewhere around uh, one of these uh, little boxes here. Anyways, let's get into uh, some more technicals as well as uh, um, some of the week's fundamentals um, starting off. Not on the uh, not on gold, but on the dollar index. Dollar index and the dollar has been going from strength to strength to strength. Um, break into I think this is new highs. In fact, I think it is new highs. Let's just go to uh, oh, actually, it's not new highs, but it's definitely um, you know uh, multi-decade highs. So look, the last time we were at this high was uh, two thousand and two. So twenty year twenty year highs. Wow. Um, and, uh, you know, that's really, um, uh, not really a, a surprise if you, uh, again, understand fundamental analysis in terms of, you know, the basics is really kind of comparing, um, currencies and seeing who is, you know, the best out of the two. That's really what currencies, um, uh, Forex currency pairs are really telling you which currency is the better of the two. And you kind of determine that through fundamental analysis, either interest rates, inflation and GDP and understanding the relationship between those three. And if you, as long as you have a, a strong foundational knowledge of those three and how they interact, then everything else you can figure out and uh, forecast and kind of predict where prices are likely to go in the medium to long term. So um, we did have on the um, uh, on Friday, uh, the uh, Labour FOM, FOMC, um, sorry, one second. Uh, yeah, sorry, uh, we did have uh, jobs data come out. So US labour force surge could ease pressure on the Fed for big rate hike. And it's a close call for FOMC on hiking um, 50 or 75 basis points. And you could flip a coin on uh, on September meeting, Swank says. So the strong August jobs report means the Federal Reserve will continue to aggressively raise rates, uh, though a surge in the US labor force could give central bankers the option to back off a little if they choose. So non-farm payrolls increased to 315,000 last month and the unemployment rate unexpectedly rose to a six month high of 3.7, the first increase since January as the participation rate um, climbed, the Labour Department uh, report showed on Friday. So it says um, you can flip a coin uh, on how 
big of an increase they do in September, says Diane Swank, chief economist at KPMG LLP. While the surge in the labour force was wonderful, she said, I don't think they want to show at any point in time that they have stopped in their resolve to get inflation down. Now, for those of you who are new, um, who don't necessarily understand, you know, the, the reasons why that is. I can't necessarily get into it, you know, 100% in this video. I have loads of videos in my uh, on my YouTube channel. Um, in fact, let me just uh, point you to that one second. Right, here we are. If you go to Trading 180 YouTube channel, loads and loads of, um, uh, of, of, of videos that I have. And one of the things I would probably go to as well uh, to really understand is if you type in webinar, um, right in there in that little search area here and click on this one here loads of different webinars i have um, a fundamental analysis but the latest one i did was six months ago a free webinar and it's the three steps to f uh, generating a profitable trade for its trade ideas and uh, this will help you get right on track with understanding um, inflation interest rates um, and uh, GDP and uh, their relationship and really how uh, to determine uh, a currency's fundamental value and currency pairs and which way they are likely to go in the medium to long term. And so um, getting back to the article, but put it this way, um, since uh, Jackson Hole, the Federal Reserve have, have been very hawkish and uh, hawkish uh, bank, meaning that they are looking to high rates is usually um, appreciates a currency. Um, and so um, the, the economy part of things and the jobs part of things comes in uh, to the fact that um, the economy can support rate hikes. Yeah, that's what they're looking at, is that the um, jobs are a... Um, are a leading indicator as as to what the economy is doing, whether we're going into you know potential recession or not, uh, because you tend to have high unemployment in a recession. You have low unemployment when the economy is you know potentially growing. It's a bit of a strange situation we're currently in at the moment, um, where we have um, you know the opposite is happening. We have two negative quarters of uh, of GDP, um, but and we still have low um, unemployment and uh, high employment um high, yeah and high employment so it's a bit of a strange one um at the moment but uh, the market is looking past i guess the technical recession uh, data and still looking to, uh, to 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 potentially hike rates it just depends on how much they are looking to hike so um with that being said you know that is still appreciative of the dollar and so for me uh, any pullbacks into you know demand zones are potentially or should be seen as buying opportunities now not necessarily buying the uh, the dollar index but as that has made new you know new highs higher highs higher lows um you can use the dollar index as um i guess as confluence uh, with your dollar you know uh, pairs if price if the price of the dollar the dollar index comes down to maybe the 108s and comes down to that nice uh, fresh bottom end of that demand zone um, and that ties in with maybe some sort of maybe demand zone on the dollar yen or the dollar swiss then you can look for you know any kind of positive price action looking for buy, uh, dollar buyers as long as obviously the fundamentals are um are in place and also as well one of the things to look towards and that's going to confirm whether i guess the uh, whether the fed are going to be hiking at 50 or uh, 75 basis points obviously if they hike at 75 basis points then that is um you know a lot more positive than uh, 50 basis points but either way um, it just depends on which one they're going to do but it's going to be really determined with uh, cpi figures which is coming out i think it's uh is it this week or next week? So um, look out for the US CPI figures. If they can, they dropped recently. I think it was to eight point five percent. And if they can, if they if they continue to fall, then the um, the Fed are likely to do fifty basis points. Yeah. If uh, CPI the inflation is seen as uh, rising, yeah then they are likely to um, you know, do 75 basis points to try and get inflation to come down to their 2% target. Yeah? So um, the movement of the dollar is gonna be really determined over the next uh, week or so uh, with regards to CPI, and that will determine whether the mar what the market thinks in terms of you know, the uh, likely um, um, uh, uh, hike that they're likely to do, whether it's gonna be 75 or 50 basis points. But 
overall, for me, it's still the dollar is still a buy, and um, you know I've been saying uh, that I've been buying the dollar for um, a very long time, and you can pretty much see you know what's been happening over that period of time, right? It's uh, it's a no brainer uh, to look for just pullbacks on that dollar. Anyways, um, and again, you can ba basically fact check that if you go to um, you know my videos right and look back on all of my videos that I've done over the past year in fact I challenge anyone out there who's watching this video to um, try and find the video that I've done this year where I've said you know to that I'm selling the dollar if you can find one I will give you a free free month um, uh, I guess trial with uh, with my uh, mentoring which I am actually opening on um, on, on um, Monday the 5th Right, enrollment starts 5th of September and it'll only be open for eight weeks. So, if you are looking to join, um, then I am opening on the 5th of September. And, um, yeah, I know a lot of people have been waiting to uh, to join, and again, that will probably close maybe a few, maybe about by the end of the week, maybe about the 10th or whatever of September. And you have a chance to join, um, if you can find for f absolute free, if you can go on my YouTube page and find the time right where I have said to get that I am short on the US dollar over the past year. So you've got a lot of videos to go through in a week. Um, and if you can find it, it won't be there. But if you can, then um, you know uh, you can get basically in for free, uh, get a free three month trial uh, subscription. Just email me at info at uh, trading180.com if you find the video. I'm very surprised if you find anything. Anyways, um, going back to uh, the charts. Moving on to the dollar yen, right? Dollar yen, um, 140. Now the dollar yen is a very strange one. I was just saying to um, uh, the members in the group that I, might actually be a sh uh, try and get short on this pair, and if it's not this pair, it'd probably be something like the euro yen, um, the euro yen and the pound yen. I don't cover those pairs in in this weekly video, but just to show you, uh, just to tell you that those two pairs, I will be looking to buy the potential, it will potentially buy the yen on, and the reason why is because 140 has been really the line in the sand for the Bank of Japan, and um, recently, the Bank of Japan came out and said that they are still looking to uh, uh, basically say remain neutral and, and are dovish on uh, interest rate hikes. But the, the, the uh, Bank of Japan has been known in the past. Um, I remember probably twice in, in, in the last maybe eight years, nine years of trading where the, um, the Bank of Japan have actually... Um, uh, it surprised the market, right? And they've done, uh, you know, quantitative easing um, and uh, loosened policy, and it's really kind of surprised the market. Now, 140 was the line in the sand, and they said that if prices go above 140, um, or they indicated this anyway, that they may have to step in and start to intervene to support the the, the yen, because the higher it goes. Um, is the uh, obviously the more devalued that currency becomes and the more devalued the currency becomes it pushes inflation higher and, if, and they don't need inflation to go you know too far beyond their two percent target and if it goes beyond that two percent target it basically means that they're going to need to high rates hence the reason why you're seeing all these other central banks like the fed the, the european central bank the bank of england all hiking rates because of the fact that their inflation is way above the uh, two percent inflation target, whereas Japan, I think, is somewhere around maybe two point eight percent. But if you know the um, the yen still continues to weaken, pushing inflation higher, then um, they're going to have to step in, and so that could be a, a great opportunity, trading opportunity, to get short, in fact, and buy the uh, the yen. And um, uh, I was saying to the guys in the group that it's something that I am definitely looking uh, to do um, as we obviously you know go higher and higher and um, one of the things to look look towards actually I'm not going to tell you all that because that's really reserved for the um, uh, for the for the members in the group right because I uh, can't give that it would be unfair on those on those uh, group members who are in the group uh, for me to keep that information kind of a bit secret because um, they're obviously uh, they're in the group for a reason I can't give everything out for free so with that being said just let you know that in fact um, I am looking for short trades or buying the yen
But in the meantime, um, if prices obviously naturally come down and pull back, right, without you know the, the Bank of Japan actually having to uh, step in, which in fact, when you think about the, the dollar, if uh, see if the CPI figures come out and they come out you know lower than expected, and then the Fed don't have to hike as much. In fact, what that could do is have a bit of a I won't say negative effect, but it could devalue the dollar. Um, to a certain point where in fact it would still be a decent buy around these 137s, 136 areas. So um, that's where I am with this at the moment. But um, I do have a bit of a sh uh, short bias potentially as, as you know, the higher um, uh, this currency pair goes. But um, that would all depend on, um, you know, the Bank of Japan and what they do and some other, um, some other factors. So uh, that's where my bias is. Um, let me have a quick zoom out. Yeah, there's nothing really to the left that's worth um, that's worth looking at. Anyways, looking on looking towards the uh, uh, dollar CAD and the dollar CAD this week are actually um, or the Bank of Canada are looking to uh, hike rates by seventy five basis points. Oh, sorry, I keep saying Bank uh, uh, CAD. Sorry, it's the dollar Swiss. I did that last week. Um, anyways, dollar Swiss uh, is obviously different. I thought this looked a bit different than the dollar cad um again the path of these resistance is to the upside because even though both central banks are looking to uh, high rates, uh, i think the dollar is ahead of the swiss franc in terms of uh, how much they're hiking and uh, just where they are uh, economically um but i think with risk if risk off does start to come into the market i think the swiss franc uh, could start to strengthen not necessarily against the dollar per se but against um, other currencies like for example the euro and the pound but um i think any pullbacks into the 96 area is decent for a long trade any pull any any trades right now if you believe that the, the swiss franc is a bargain against the dollar don't know why you would do that but um or think that but if it could be then this is actually a decent area to look for uh, any kind of short trades um dollar cad um coming up to this um one three one one three two area and i think technically i do like this as a sell i said this last week not necessarily a pair i'm interested in uh, in in buying or trading at all but there is um uh, technically uh, there was a reason to to try to look for um, some uh, some short trades at the top, but like again, I think the path of these resistance is to the uh, is to the upside. So any pullbacks into that zone, the one thirties, is a decent buy. I think um, if you do want to be a buyer of the um, of the of the Canadian dollar against the uh, uh, the US dollar, then uh, now is really the time. Any pullbacks into that area there. I think a decent for a uh, short trade. In fact, you may probably just have missed the best opportunity, which would have been the first touch of a level. Second touches of levels uh, tend to diminish um, uh, the level working out because it's no longer a bargain. It was a bargain here, bargain here, but then mul you know multiple touches, it becomes less of a bargain because everybody else can see the bargain. So everyone else is buying there, which basically just means that it's not really a bargain anymore. So um, yeah, um, not really a pair that I'm interested in trading though. Uh, but if you are, those are really your options. New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Again, really nice technically. Nice demand zone technically, but not something I'm interested in taking. Although um, I did say uh, last week that I think the path of these resistance is still to the downside with the US dollar. Um, you know, risk off uh, being um, something that is uh, in the market and. Uh, Commodity currencies versus the dollar don't do so well. So again, the path of this resistance was to the downside. Any pullbacks into that zone, I think, should be uh, short in opportunities. If you know things do turn around from a risk sentiment perspective and risk starts to come back on, then I think this New Zealand dollar is going to be a very nice uh, potential buy. But I can't see that happening anytime soon. Um, pound dollar, pound dollar. Again, um, look back on my past videos. I've been saying, um, you know. Basically, that I'm my bias is to short the uh, the dollar and you, I mean uh, the pound, and you're seeing this uh, really kind of play out, right? A lot of traders would have would have been um, you know uh, long here trying to get that double bottom, but if you don't understand the fundamentals and don't understand what's going on and why you shouldn't be buying the uh, the pound here 
um, against the dollar, then you're just going to get slaughtered, right? And this is basically what, what, what has happened to those traders. They just look at technical patterns and say, all right, then, well, that should work. But understanding there are forces beyond the price chart which determine which way a currency, you know, should move in. Um, and uh, it was obvious, you know, the probabilities anyway was to the downside. And again, check out my uh, my previous weekly videos and I've been saying, you know, short, 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 short the, 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 the pound. Um, and, you know, for, again, various reasons, uh, one being um, Liz Truss, uh, plan to turbocharge UK economy already alarms markets a concern about a mix of big spending plans and upending Bank of England remit so she's trying to um, uh, think she's trying to say to the Bank of England that they should look at their monetary policy as far as inflation and stuff like that crazy um, what these politicians you know should be gone in um, you know uh, maybe depending on how long maybe three four five years uh, the Bank of England will still be around so um, anyways, the the pound and the UK bonds are trailing most of uh, most other major economies, and I'll just read some of the uh, paragraphs in this. And Liz Truss is set to become the UK Prime Minister this week uh, with a plan to turbocharge the economy by slashing taxes, already worrying investors amid double-digit inflation. Um, and it says that she would take office after declaring a willingness to run up the budget deficit just as the Bank of England is raising interest rates and selling its own holdings of government bonds. She has also indicated that she will review the bank's central bank mandate um, and markets have already signalled concern about uh, a trust premiership as bond traders fret that a flood of guilt, which is basically uh, um, the uh, government bonds, government treasury bonds, known as gilts, uh, may be too much to absorb, triggering higher debt servicing costs. So since July the 7th, when Johnson decided to step aside, um, well, she was forced. Um, borrowing costs on the 10-year government bonds has risen faster than those of any of the other 22 major bond markets. The pound has also trailed 132. 132 sorry of the uh, world's top 50 currencies and a uh, quote from um, Mark Capleton strategist at Bank of America Corp he says we have a number of concerns about the dependence on the kindness of strangers to fund the UK when the public finances are likely to deteriorate materially um, so that's not great um, cost of living crisis um, is going on as well and it says should trust win should inherit inflation at 10.1 percent and uh, on track to breach 20 percent for the first time since 1974 according to goldman sachs group investors are betting on interest rates uh, rise of 4.75 percent by may threatening misery for mortgage borrowers with uh, more familiar with rates below one percent so again um not good with the bank of england expecting a recession by the end of the year industry has also been told to prepare for orchestrated blackouts this winter a labor and labor groups are talking about the first nationwide strike since 1926 so all these issues going on in the uk um you know and um you could just you know see it happening right regardless of whether the bank of england are hiking rates they're hiking into weakness and if you watch last week's um weekly uh, call or weekly uh, video I was saying that um, you know I read a HSBC article which basically was saying that um, you know when central banks hike into weakness economic weakness it's you know rarely positive for that currency so if you don't understand this this is why you know you watch uh, my videos and uh, so you can prepare and stay on the right side of the market you know more often than the wrong side of the market right and uh, and so for me really any pullbacks to this supply zone of buying opportunities for the uh, for the dollar or shorting opportunities uh, at least for the foreseeable future anyway um, can't see myself buying the pound for now unless there is a reversal of uh, fortunes which it does not look like at all all also as well i think there were some other articles here uh, goldman sachs yeah was just talking about inflation could top 22 percent um next year in the uk and then there was uh uk slips behind india to become the world's sixth biggest economy so loss of status becomes 
uh, comes as ruling Tory party elects new premier and cost of living shock batters the UK while Indian economy surges. So, you know, um, we're losing our status in the UK as um, uh, as an economic, um, you know, from, from an economic growth uh, perspective, which again, you know, is reflecting on the price chart, right? This is not stupid Elliott Wave, regardless of, I don't care what you believe in Elliott Wave, it's, it's not going to tell you, Elliott Wave is not telling you where prices are going in the future. Yes, you can plot Wave 1, Wave 2, A, B, C, D, etc. But, you know, if you don't understand fundamental analysis, yeah, it's you're, you're, you're constantly going to be um, guessing what wave you're in and understanding fundamental analysis, you don't need to know what wave you're in, you can just tell the direction over the medium to long term, right? This is basically, this is a no-brainer. This is an absolute no-brainer. Um, anyways, looking towards the euro dollar, right? Euro dollar. And um, euro dollar, again, for me, my bias is still to the, to the short side. Um, any pullbacks uh, to any kind of supply zones for now, I think are, are definitely uh, setting and shorting opportunities for the euro. You could get some positive uh, data uh, come out. The euro is looking um, uh, to, to high crates by 75 basis points between 50 and 75, same as the US, um, but they have um, some issues. So looking at this article, the ECB still seen playing catch up as a as rate hike path steepens. A survey of economists predicts 75 basis points hike next week. Um, inflation outlook also shifts higher um, uh, in August uh, to the 1st uh, September poll. So um, again, central banks trying to tackle uh, inflation issues. Um, they have to hike rates, um, but I think it's still against the dollar um, it's it's um, it's going to be a tough one in terms of uh, the euro uh, really appreciating, and um, uh, again, I think Goldman Sachs was talking about uh, European gas prices will stay high. Yes, they came down this week. I think something like about fifty percent, but um, there is there is um, the fear that. Um, uh, and I think it was, in fact, was it here? It was in the uh, in the week ahead. It was talking about the German, yeah. So it talks about, for example, the the, the situation will, will be closely watched because the pipeline to bring gas to Germany from Russia will no longer uh, reopen as planned. So um, you can see that that's probably going to end up, you know, pushing up uh, gas prices. So I think the pullback in gas prices, you know, this week or when was it Thursday, Friday? Uh, was probably more temporary than anything and um, uh, you know gas prices going higher basically cost of living um, which um, also um, uh, can push you know obviously uh, the economy into a recession as well as even rate hikes as well rate hikes um, you know can um, and typically do push the economy um, or contract the economy right so lots of um, uh, problems going on for Europe I think even more so uh, Europe and the UK um, when you consider um, who's the dog with the least fleas the dog with the least fleas for me is the uh, is the US dollar and um, the dog with the most fleas would be the um, uh, Europe and the uh, and the UK so with that being said for me um, it's really about just uh, understanding maybe just pullbacks uh, if you can get some into some supply zones or if prices do break beyond that demand zone, then um, you know pull back into what would be a supply zone before looking at getting um, short. But um, there could be a short term. I'm hoping for a bit more of a pullback. To be fair, around that 103 area, the 102s for um, any kind of shorting opportunities um, to get back in on this uh, euro dollar, uh, Aussie dollar. Um, again looking at this uh, commodity currency against uh, the dollar with the US dollar was um, was really bound to kind of strengthen I do think like the uh, New Zealand dollar US dollar I think that's a nice technical level to look for buy trades but for me um, not really a pair that I'm looking at buying at all but if I was again the path of least resistance would be to the downside I think I said this last week and uh, you can see this kind of breakthrough um, 
again, the reason why we'd be buying the Australian dollar would only really be if um, risk off sentiment starts to um, starts to dissipate and risk on starts to come into play. So uh, that could start to happen. Or again, if if the US uh, dollar uh, don't may, maybe hike as much um, as they uh, expected to, or there's some really bad um, you know economic data, or inflation starts to actually come down. Um, then the US will stop hiking as much, which would then cause, I think, the Australian dollar to actually be a very nice buy around here. So there's a few things to watch for. Um, and I, if I'm going to buy, buy the, um, um, if I'm going to short the Australian dollar, um, oh, I say short the US dollar, I think it, one of the currencies I would be shorting it against would be the Australian dollar. That uh, would be definitely a, a decent choice to go um to look to buy against the US dollar. So, yep, there's that. If not, you're looking at sell trades within this uh, supply zone here. Uh, Aussie yen, again, looking for some decent pullbacks. Let me just clear the chart a bit. Um, yeah, looking for some decent pullbacks. We've just had uh, really just prices keep going higher and higher, we'll grind higher. And, um, you know, Biggie, I do want to get uh, long on this but also as well I'm very cautious about um, uh, uh, the uh, the Bank of Japan looking to potentially step in and um, and support their currencies so again you start to see where we are in terms of where price you know highs and uh, recent highs and recent lows uh, you know the timing of of the um, of the Bank of Japan um, stepping in, you know, we could be at decent highs to look for any kind of short trades. But again, that, that would have to also depend upon whether um, the dollar yen is at, you know, the 140s and beyond, right, before looking at potentially getting short around here or establishing short positions uh, around uh, this uh, 96 area if you were looking to buy the Japanese yen. For me, Though part of this resistance, hopefully, if prices can kind of pull back, especially down to you know these ninety one areas, I think that's going to be a nice uh, potential buy uh, for the Australian dollar. And finally, gold. Um, gold. I've uh, been saying for um, for a few weeks. I think gold is definitely a buy, uh, not necessarily from a trading perspective, um, because really the dollar is um, you know still appreciating, but. Going into next year, I do think that we should see um, uh, uh, gold start to uh, pick up. And I just want to show you something. One second. So this is from um, the uh, Discord uh, room. Um, and uh, I was just doing some analysis on gold and Ruby Ron. Uh, was saying that gold is edging closer to the monthly lows and um, we spoke about this probably maybe a couple of weeks ago where we were saying there's a you know there, there are some setups around that low where um, where I want to be involved in now um, here I said you know not financial advice and this was to you know to the group but I said but I believe that gold is a buy I covered it in the group call yesterday but as we go into a global slowdown and the central banks are likely to start cutting rates next year due to in, impending recessions uh, I think it's the perfect opportunity to start to scale in at these prices the Fed and other central banks are coming to the end of their hiking cycle which has currently been seen as a gold negative right so um, their hiking cycle yeah interest rates being hiked is seen as a gold negative but if they're coming to the end of it right then that should be positive so anyways i'll continue reading on uh right it's been seen as a gold negative because investors are prioritizing dollar yield over risk of safe haven concerns so the logic should follow that if the fed and other central banks uh, will have to reverse their monetary policy next year along with recession uh, risk off fears then that should be positive for gold, right? Trading gold will be more difficult in the short term as trying to pick bottoms always are. Um, but from a biophysical gold perspective, I think these prices are near their lows. Technically, uh, I'd want to see a stop hunt below the major level uh, to start to trade it. Of course, I could be wrong, but it's a trade investment idea I'm willing to share with you. If it makes sense, then prepare, but please don't blindly follow what I say. If it does make sense, uh, if it does not make sense, sorry, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. 
and I've put a, basically a chart with my analysis on there, which again is for the members. And um, and so, you know, going back to you know this price chart, um, you know, central banks have been buying gold. Um, they've been increasing their buying, and they look, you know, six, twelve, eighteen months ahead, right? They're not looking at you know short term price movements in terms of. Um, you know, looking at five minute, ten minute, you know, time frames. They're looking at the bigger picture, and so for me, um, I do think um, that gold is a is a buy, and um, yeah, uh, I'm gonna you know uh, look to start buying uh, some gold um, uh, right now as prices start to come down to these levels, and um, again, not financial advice, but trading wise, yeah, I think this is. Um, this is a level I'm not really keen on on trading because it's been touched several times. One, uh, two, three, four. So it might be a level maybe just below it that you can get involved in. Probably here from a supply and demand uh, perspective, maybe something here. All right, that'd be nice if prices can probably come down to that zone there. Um, but yeah, my my bias is to the to the upside, and again, I don't know what's going to happen this week. Um, uh, nobody knows what's going to happen week to week, day to day. But I know, um, or I'm you know, the probabilities are on my side that I think, um, and my trade idea is uh, is as I think is quite sound in terms of you know what's coming down the road and uh, why gold should start to uh, you know go. Uh, the price of gold should start to go higher over at least you know towards the end of the year into uh, into next year now again the timing is obviously uh, um, the difficult part who knows right nobody knows when you know price will reverse um, but there are certain things again I can't share around this area that I'm looking for in order for me to trade it at least um, but I have to see that and then I'll look for a decent trade anyways if you are looking to buy gold um, just know that this area here isn't necessarily the best zone to look for uh, long trades um, because it has been touched several times um, from a selling perspective if you still believe that the dollar the US dollar is the uh, is the buy um, you should look for uh, at least a sell trade uh, into that supply zone that's 1749 to 1765 area to look for any kind of short trades um, to continue buying um, you know the US dollar against uh, gold but I think that trade might be coming to a bit of an end um, in terms of uh, the longer term fundamentals anyways um, thought I'd share that with you guys again don't forget that I do have the uh, enrollment which opens uh, the 5th of September go to trading180.com uh, watch this video as well it will tell you basically um, all about the uh, the mentoring and uh, the discord group if you have any questions uh, just uh, email me at info at trading 180.com and I'll try and get back to you uh, as soon as I can and uh, guys take care have a great trading week and I will speak to you soon until the next video